that now and like with the, with the new like version that you have I think like that captures what you're going for perfectly so thank you I was gonna say about your logo that the hands it makes me it gives me a feeling that you know it's that you're going to take care of us. You're caring, you're going to take care of our yard. Yes, <laughs> see, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah, and so like, and like the original one didn't really have that much, uh, that feeling, so like, yeah. yeah. Hi, Professor. Hi. Yes, I, I, I agree with those comments. Sorry for the interruption there with all that. Um, uh, my my only thought was the topography on the contact information, the uh, phone number, and uh, that that contact information over there. Um, uh, can we look at that one more time? I think um, to a certain to a certain degree, it's the lockup of the the logo where it's positioned on on the layout, as well as the positioning of the phone the contact information on the left. So what really where they're positioned, they are connecting with the corners of the overall page more than they are connecting with the actual image or the phrase, our, our baby, your yard. And that's what they need to do. They need to connect with the image or the other typography more so than they do with the corners of the page. Our baby, your yard doesn't have any necessary strong connection to the corners of the page. It does connect to one another and it connects with the image because it's, you know, it's crossing over the image. It's, it's doing all of that. So, so that's all, there's a nice relationship between that typography and the, and the image, but not so much with the other groupings yet. So some typical things to try would be, let's say, um, and, and the contact information really ideally it should group with the the logo because that's the signature of the company mm -hmm. and that's the contact information for the company so it makes sense that those two have a visual relationship that's stronger so since you have them opposite one another right now a a possible thing to try would be to either make the logo lockup a little bit bigger, maybe a, a combination of these two things, maybe the logo lockup a little bit bigger and the contact information a little smaller so that they seem like they're, so that they are on the same baseline. You know, like the telephone numbers on the same baseline as Yard's, key, yards Keeper, you know, that kind of idea. Um, and that uh, potentially it's, it's no longer even over all the way to the left, but it's moved to the right so that the logo's in the middle or between. Um, so you essentially have a lockup of contact information, logo and yards keeper, yeah, so, something like that. And then maybe that contact information is, I suppose it, there's too big of a gap between the phone number in, in that. There you go. Yeah, try uh, That's possible. And try yard, Yards Keeper on the right hand or the left hand side of the logo. Can, you know what I mean? And because there was too big a gap uh, on that top line. Yeah, something like that. And, and now contact information over. Let's see what this looks like. Um, I, 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 uh, it's not quite there yet. I mean, the, the, the spacing I think is the issue to still work out, but that's, that's a, that makes sense, right? Why I'm saying this, Gavin? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I was saying yes, I didn't realize I was still on mute. 
Okay, so what we're looking for is a stronger connection, continuation, alignment, completion between those parts, which right now are just kind of existing separately. Okay, okay. Um, let's let's try one other as long as we're here. Take take that uh, logo lock up and move it uh, up a little bit. Yeah, right there, and move the contact information over and aligned below the words, not the logo there. Okay, so if we, do, if, if we don't look at anything else at the moment, of the two main ways that we just looked at, that one's a little bit better, I believe, right? Yeah. Okay, of just the logo, the name, and the contact information. Um, it still maybe doesn't quite totally work with the image yet and the positioning of our baby your yard. Um, it's possible to get that, but again, it's tweaking the spacing and the goal that you're headed towards is having um, things have a visual connection with one another, that invisible glue that I talked about in GD2. Right. Okay. Okay. Overall though, very nice direction. Conceptually, the most important part here, you, you're absolutely on a good track there. So now we're talking about the minutia here the, of these little details. Okay. What if I put the, the contact information like just right at the bottom? Maybe, but it, 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 it's, it's kind of like, I say maybe because it's all about how they connect with one another, not how they connect with the edge of the page. Mm -hmm. Okay, or the corners of the page. So one of the things that you moved away early on, we talked about moving away from symmetry, because symmetry is is just if one for one, it was creating a very formal feel. And that's not what you were after you were after this personal feel, and, right. and symmetry didn't help. But the other thing that symmetry is doing, it's creating a visual relationship with the edges of the page more so than anything else it's that it's not totally that but it's it's that what ideally you're after here because the image is cropped is that implies we're not seeing everything it's in our world it comes out into our real space that's that's what cropping does okay so to continue that idea and reinforce the visual connections between the things that are on the page that's that's your goal okay okay yeah i think uh, keep playing around with that stuff and you're going to be fine what, one right. way to do this one way to do this is to completely take those things off off the the page right now and just put them on a, a total white artboard <laughs> and create a relationship between the just all of the type, the our baby, your yard, the yards keeper, the logo and the contact information, create a connection between those things, because then you obviously aren't thinking about the corners or the edges or the center of the page, get that relationship working and then move it over here and see what happens. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, here, let me share. too many things okay um so this one's like very rough still i have a lot of things i'm uh like tweaking and i haven't ex like exported it since making edits but basically i'm gonna put this window in like a mock-up of a computer so you can see it like on the desktop um and so it loads and then it kind of just has like a walkthrough uh-huh um and so, like, I've just animated a bunch of stuff in After Effects as if you were, like, scrolling down the page. This is what you see. Okay. Um, so, let's see. There's, like, that at the bottom, and then it goes over here, and then the next part is it's clicking the products, and then all the columns drop down that you get to pick from, and then yeah so i mean there's like four minutes of it still but like it goes down like about the brand 
and stuff. So it's like, this is what, yeah, this one I still have like some edits on. I'm in the middle of like working on that, Mm -hmm. that section and then the apparel like click down so you can see like what that would look like. I, I think the animation as a way to show the interactivity that would happen or the motion that would happen on the website is fine. I think okay. that that's demonstrating that and will work f- fine for you. The, the part I'm concerned with, and I think today hopefully is the worst, but these internet connections and everything really mess up um, the flow, the smoothness of, of anything. So, um, oh, you mean like playing it like over Zoom? Yeah. Oh. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of brainstorming here. I wonder if you can, can is, it a, is it a movie that you can just play and it plays? Yeah, yeah. I've exported it from After Effects as just the dot .mov, I think. And okay, so it's then, just it's playing through the animation. Okay, so my suggestion is going to be upload that um, to Vimeo or YouTube or something, and then you can have everybody access it on their own computer if need be. Okay, I'll do that for sure. Thank okay. you. And ho- hopefully we won't have to do that, but... I don't, I don't want, you know, we're trying to th- foresee any, uh, any of these technical glitches that ju- it would just make it difficult to understand what it is that's going on. But I think in general, the idea um, of using the animation to imitate and, and illustrate the ideas of uh, motion that would happen on the website, I think that's good. Yeah, I like it. Um, um, I just have one question really quick. Sorry. So during yeah, yeah. my presentation, I, um, when I'm like showing the video of the animations and like assuming it runs smoothly, yeah. Um, do you think it would be better for me to like talk about it as, as um, it's like playing and like, not like narrate, but like kind of like talk about like at the same time as it's playing or just let it... people watch it? Go ahead, Gavin. Uh, like commentary. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think honestly, you're going to play it more than once. Mm-hmm. So uh, well, it's like five minutes long. Well, and you that's might like half the presentation though. Oh, the true. <laughs> true. Or I think it's like four. So I don't know. Okay. So let's see here. What are we going to do with that? This is a realistic problem. Um, well, you've provided a way that pe- if it's on YouTube or video, Vimeo, that, that people can return to it in their own time and look at it more that way. So you, you, you say that whether we have a technological issue or not. Mm-hmm. And you might make sure everybody has that, that link. Yeah. Okay. So that they can return to it. Then you are going to go through it. And your question is, well, I'm basically, I'm only going to have one shot to go through it. How should I do it? Should I comment on it as it's going or, or not? And I believe if that's the case, that yeah, that is what you have to do. It's running okay. and you're doing a voiceover commentary. Or could I do it while I'm presenting? How do you mean? Like, like on Monday, like as I'm talking about the um like the rest of the project itself could i just talk in person or do you want me to like voice record oh now i I, i've got you i I was um there's advantages to both um if you voice record over it then you can make sure you got your words right i kind of have an idea instead of making a presentation maybe you could just do your presentation on that website so that way you're not taking up too much time i don't know unless you want to show it all on um, powerpoint or something like that wait what sorry yeah I, i'm a little unsure there too what did you mean there sorry i was thinking like um just was that a real website that you made 
No, the, because the I was using Squarespace, but a template doesn't let me include the animation effects that I wanted, and I don't know how to code. So yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I made never, the little never like, mind then mock up on the top. So so actually, these are two other realistic things. If there's ever a part that you don't yet know how to do, don't say it that way. So a typical okay. example would be what you just just said, don't say, I don't know how to code. Say instead uh, that I've mocked up, you know, you're not lying because um, you, you shouldn't do that. But don't, uh, instead, what you want to do is focus on the positive of what you've done, mm -hmm. which is legit. You, what you're doing is you are, uh, uh, this is a mock-up of what the motion would look like on the website. That's what you say something like that. So mm -hmm. you're explaining what it is we're looking at. It's not, uh, and then, and you could even say, because someone might say, oh, is this, is this live now? Is this website live? And so you could say at the beginning, the website is not live right now. This is a mock-up of what the, um, the, some of the main pages would look like and what the animation motion would look like on that website. And here's a link to a video that you can uh, look at it uh, more in depth on your own time, something like that. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Okay, but that's a real, very, very realistic thing. And in an interview, uh, honestly, uh, I hear all sorts of, of especially recent grads not apply for jobs because it says something like needs five years experience or whatever or need to be able to enlist all the things that they, the requirements that they want someone to have. Well, having been on both sides of that fence, people write down what they want, knowing they're not likely to find one person that has all of those things. They're going to interview people and they're going to base their decision on uh, a lot of factors. One, which is a person that comes in with a, a majority of those qualifications. But the thing is that everybody's going to come, on, come in with some other qualifications that the person who's hiring didn't even think to ask, because that's what makes mm -hmm. each of us individual. And so um, I guess my point on this one is you're always presenting what, what you are. You're not lying, you're not misleading, but you're not shying away from a challenge either. So let's say that, oh, geez, this all matches up with me. And then this one thing that says that you have to have three to five years experience and all of a sudden I don't apply. No, that's not good. But you go in and then you talk about what you do and, 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 uh, and, you, uh, you, uh, talk, and you also explain or tell what, experience you do have and let them make the decision of whether or not it had to be exact well that three to five years experience is a game changer if they don't have that sorry <laughs>